What's up, people? We are back with more of Dun Gun Rumpa in the previous video. As you can see, we bow found both of the moved bodies of Hifumi and Taka, and for some unknown fucking reason, Hina's magical tears made Hifumi come back to life for like five seconds and give us the name for the person who attacked him, which is Hiro. Which kind of makes sense considering all of pretty much everyone has an alibi except Hiro. So yeah, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be that straightforward of course, but there's more investigation to do so um, I think we're done with this place, the repository or, or, or I don't know what the, what, the, what the fuck it was called. But we got two more places to look which is both where Taka died in the equipment room, in the, the physics lab, as well as the nurse's office, the nurse's room on the first floor. So considering that we're on the third floor right now. Might as well just immediately head to the physics lab, the equipment room. Damn. Alright, god dang it, Genocide Jack is here too. So this is the, the mallet. Justice Hammer 4. The weapon that was used to kill Taka. The body was moved, but the murder weapon was just left here. I know, right? So strange. There's some kind of tire mark going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. Ah, okay, that, that makes sense, yeah. The fact that it's a tire mark rather than a drag mark. A drag mark would probably be a bit broader as well, considering it would probably either be Taka's arms or legs or something. And they're not that thin, so yeah. It makes sense now that it was, um... What's it called on the wheelie? It's not a wheelie, it's a dooley? Dooley, dealie, ruley? I don't fucking know. The, the, the thing with four wheels, yeah, where, they, where he lifted... Taka on and the dually. Now what the fuck is it called? Now I really want to know. It's not a wheelie, is it? Fuck it, I'm calling it wheelie. But yeah, the th the wheelie. He put Taka on the wheelie and then he just wheeled him out of there. That's apparently what happened. Da oh, the dolly. <laughs> okay, dolly. That reminds me about the dolly in the repository. There was blood on its tire. That uh, could that blood have come from? It's obvious, right? Here? Which could mean that Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms are on the third floor, so that should definitely have been possible. Nice! Equipment room bloodstain has been added. But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body, what about Hifumi? Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with the dolly, there's no way to get it up to the third floor, as far as we know. That's still a total mystery. Indeed it is. Um, anything else? It, this is oh, one of the mats is missing here. Huh? This tarp? I feel like I've seen it before, and just recently too. Yeah, nothing else with that? Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure we all know where it's from, right? the one that Taka's body was laying on. Alright Jill, what you got? I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away. What? what, what, what? I'm super pissed I'm in such an uh, ultimately rare event. Okay. Nothing else. That's probably a camera up there. Indeed it is. Alright. Um, time to go to the nurse's office. The hammer's still there. The pool of blood is obviously still there. This thing was rather suspicious before. A refrigerator? I wonder if there's anything to drink inside. After everything I've been through, I'm totally parched. Maybe just a quick peek. What are we gonna find? There's a bunch of blood packets in there. For blood transfusions, I guess. It doesn't help me, though, because I'm not a vampire. Blood packets? That could mean that this is just all fake, right? Honestly, if there are blood packets in there, they could totally just use the blood, spray it all over themselves like, Oh yeah, that's why, that, that could explain why Fumi was like, you know, when he suddenly got uh, awoke, because maybe the tear in, uh, of Hina actually just like went in his eye and like, Oh shit, it's burnt, I can't take it anymore, and then he actually had to open his eye and therefore he had to pretend like, Oh no guys, see I'm actually awake. Probably not that, but I don't know. The fact that there are blood packets here makes it like, makes the fact that it could be faked much more a realistic option. Justice Hammer 3, the one that was used to kill Hifumi. Someone moved the body, but left the weapon behind. Here as well, same thing. 
I don't see anything about the blood. Okay. Uh, this one. It's just a normal trash can. Huh? Wait. There's something inside. It's never just a normal trash can. It's too small to be a handkerchief. It's a uh, glasses cleaning cloth. And it's got some kind of cartoon character on it. Okay, so that's definitely Hifumi's, right? Definitely, because it has that princess Dalai Lama thingy on it. Ah, oh, but it's also covered in blood. And, you know, so that's what either Hifumi himself or someone else wiped Hifumi's glasses off with. Oh. Ah, oh, did you find something? Yeah, there was a cleaning cloth in the trash can. Huh? A cleaning cloth? And it's all bloody. Whoever this belonged to must have used it to wipe up some blood. But who would need to do something like that? <sighs> I haven't the slightest idea. Yeah, me neither. But I think it might be important. Alright, perfect. Anything else, Celeste? What are you investigating, Celeste? <laughs> I am not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I am simply going around, seeing if Hiro might be hiding somewhere. You think he might be hiding under the beds or something? Mm. What about you? Oh, you know, I'm just checking this and that, doing general detective stuff. The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Hifumi's body. Let's see. How Hifumi was moved, eh? When it disappeared, you are supposed to be in a nurse's office, right? Yes, indeed. Correct. Hina was not feeling well, so I stayed behind to look after her. But she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. And when you got back, the body was gone? Mm. We could not have gone for more than a minute or two, though. Why do I feel like a fool who just stood up and walked away? Yeah, Hina said the same thing. So then, the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time? Indeed. It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Hifumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of it as anything less than impossible. Celeste's so accounts... Like, you don't see dolly tracks or anything like that in here either. Anything else in here? The camera? Nope. I don't know. Where the hell do we look now? Hmm. So this is where you were. I've been looking for you. You have? Hmm. I wanted to thank you for what you did. Not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Um, you should go to Hero's room. Oh, and let me give you this. Meet in the dining hall. This is the note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up. Ah, oh, how could I forget about that? That could be part of like setting oh, this whole plan into motion, right? Uh, I don't exactly remember, but I'm pretty sure he sent it to everyone. And wait, that was before, I think if I remember correctly. When I, I remember getting that note, we then went to the dining hall, and then Hero was there alone, and then Hero was like, yeah, we should go to the sauna. Then we all went to the sauna, and everyone else there was waiting, and then we ultimately discussed the fact that the laptop went missing, and that it was gone. That Alter Ego was gone. Huh. <laughs> you remember well. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. It's all penmanship now. is gonna be important, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? <laughs> Things grow even more exciting. Um, what are you talking about? I've already repaid my debts. I don't owe you any more explanation. Goodbye. Okay, Byakuya. Yasuhiro's message. Um, so he said to go to Hiro's room, but... What's waiting for me there? Well, let's find out. Yasuhiro. Alright, this is his room. The door is... unlocked? I guess I can go inside? Byakuya did say to go look. It might not be a great idea. 
but I'm gonna take the plunge. Alright, take a deep plunge. What the actual fuck? This is Hero's Room. There's all kind of weird stuff in here. Oh my god. Where did he even get all of this from? It's like, you know, you go to the... What do you call those crazy people that read like tarot cards and stuff? You know, you know what I mean, right? It's not, it's, I almost wanted to say circus, but it's not like that. You go to like one of those fairs and then you have those weird like magical, quote unquote magical people, you know, when you walk into their tent and like, I can read your future for a quarter. And then they, he reads the lines on your hands and then he spits in it and like, yeah, you're gonna have a big pool. More importantly, he still hasn't turned up, which means he can't really complain if I don't get his permission to search his room. Right? What the fuck is all this? Well, there's a bunch of stuff to look through. The boxes, I guess. Let's start with that. I think there's something in a cardboard box. It's blueprints for something. And oh my god, Robo Justice. Something's made out of. It looks like cardboard, plastic, and. Master? Is this Robo Justice? And it's in Hero's room. But wait, these blueprints. Something about them bothers me. Have the arms bent like this, okay? Hmm. Robo Justice blueprints. What the frickity frack? We can go in the bathroom, I guess. I soundlessly check the bathroom. There's nothing in here. It's pretty grungy though. How does a bathroom even get this dirty? Um, I see a hippie too. What else is there to look in here? Not much. Well, it's the only the bed. It's a normal bed. Pretty much just like the one in my room. So that's it, right? Why does this camera keep flickering? It might just be a visual glitch for me. Yeah, it seems to be that way. But he's got all this weird kooky stuff, which we can't actually interact with. Only the boxes. Was that the only thing he wanted to show me? Seems like it. I mean, not to say that it wasn't important. Makoto! Big news! Big news! What's wrong? We found Kyoko! Oh no. Okay, she can't be dead, right? Well, she could, but if she turns out to be dead, that means that Hifumi and... Um, Taka haven't been killed by the same person, right? I think that's how the rules work out. Right? The same person can't kill more than two people. I think that's how it works. What? Is she okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big news. Just a second. Robo Justice showed up too. Robo Justice? Mm. It's Hero. Wearing the costume! Okay. Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor! Oh my god, to think you and Kyoko would turn up at the same time! Anyway, I have to head to the pool, so I ran off to the second floor as fast as I could. Well... What the fuck is happening over there? Why is everyone so far away? Kyoko, you have got some splaining to do. Hmm. Kyoko! And... I mean... Phew, man. I have had the worst day. Yeah, it's gotta be pretty rough killing two people, right? Hmm. Hero? The fact that he's able to show his face here. Well, I guess we'll just talk with the... The elephant in the room? Um, hero? Huh? Oh, hey, Makoto. <laughs> yeah, duh. Who else would I be? Um, that's a good huh? question. What? Why do I look like this? Did someone come along and remodel me while I was sleeping? Was it the Illuminati? No, it's not confirmed. Okay, he's definitely gone fucking crazy. Right. I found Hero. It was jammed into the pool locker room. It looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and woke him up. Don't be mean! I still can't believe you kicked me! 
You could have been a little more gentle about it. Like, I don't know, caress my face or something. She's what? not your mother. That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden, without a trace. Wow. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. Oh, girl, you can't be, you can't act that mysterious. And then, I mean, she, no, no, no. She can act that mysterious, right? But then she shouldn't. I mean, then she can't complain if people find her suspicious. I can't. Never mind. It's nothing. Never mind. Hey. More importantly, she says that. But does she have any idea? Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? And? First of all, hero, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. Okay, girl, you can't go asking other people to explain themselves if you haven't explained yourself either. I mean... Oh, uh, well, I mean, I have no idea. One second I was asleep. Don't even know how that happened. And then I woke up, and then I was here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume. It pains me to just look at you. Huh? Well, um, he's naked under there, isn't he? Let me out of here! I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off! A little help? <laughs> Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? You got it all wrong! I didn't make this stupid freaking thing! Let's see... There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. Huh, it looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly, we were able to get Hero out of the suit. It took a few minutes, but eventually, we got all the pieces off. <laughs> oh my god. So he's seriously... Pr oh. So Kyoko found him stuffed in the locker basically, right? Which could mean someone framed Hero, but who the fuck is it? The thing about it is, they would have to know a shit ton about Hero to be able to, you know, know what he was up to. I mean, someone, someone could have planted all that Robo Justice stuff in his room as well, right? Because if you look at the environment of his room, he's got like this crazy fortune telling stuff, and I don't know, talking with the people from the from the underworld and whatnot, talking with demons, but. The Robo Justice thing it seems really out of place, right? So it could be that it is planted, but the thing is like nobody nobody of us really fits the description besides the fact that we all have an alibi except Kyoko, but nobody fits the like the proper body, like the same height or anything like that of Hero to be able to act pretend as Hero as uh, with another Robo Justice suit and then stuff the he real Hero in the locker here and then pretend to be the pretend to be hero while killing other people and therefore blaming hero? I don't fucking know. <sighs> I don't know. Cool. Free at last. Mm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits hero? So then... More to the point, nobody but hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Wait, what? Uh, hold on a sec. Honestly. Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. How does she know? Is that okay? In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. <laughs> That's true. I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be? Then it's obvious. The one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone. That's terrible. Was Hero. <sighs> Shall we tie him up? And gag him? Oh my god, I knew you were into that kind of stuff, Celeste. Just the I knew worst. it. Good idea. We wouldn't want him killing anyone else. Wow, Hina's into that too. What? what? Tie me up? Can't we just put him back into the locker? Hold on, guys. I think that's going a little far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Hmm. Yeah. I mean... Uh, um... Attacking? Blueprints? I have no idea what you guys are talking what about. The heck? You can't talk your way out of this. It's been decided. 
You killed them! <laughs> what? See, this is what I mean. Whenever it was, whenever something with kill or death or anything, quote unquote, that's scary to him was involved, he he cried his eyes out and like was like, you can generally see the fear in his face right now, right? That's the expression that he had every single time. So I find it weird that he's suddenly capable of killing two people like that. Like, yeah. I feel like all the clues that we have and all the information that we have at the moment really really points at Hero, but I actually think some part of me thinks that he could actually be innocent. That it's not him. I mean, consider the fact Kyoko was missing for god knows what reason, the fact that he has, um, that Monokuma has a spy, and we don't really know who that is either, and the fact that there's just, I don't know, I feel like, I feel like there are so many sort of conveniences in place that could make all of those deaths seem like a like fake as well you know so i have no idea i just i'm actually kind of believing in hero's innocence at the moment but yeah i mean all we can just talk about right now is theories anyway we just gotta wait until the trial because even with like i think that that really happened with the second uh, trial his trial where it's just like yeah we went into the trial with only like half of the information, but everything changed so dras drastically and dramatically like halfway during the entire, um, during the class trial. So I feel like even if we manage to get the information that we need at the moment that we think like, oh, it's going to point to hero, stuff is going to come up in the, during the class trial anyway, that's going to point fingers at other people and whatnot. So, and obviously like, yeah, we're going to find our stuff that we find during the investigation. But other people are going to be doing their own investigating as well, like, I don't know if Kyoko has done it, but she usually does. Byakuya definitely does, and the rest not so much. I feel like one character might find out one important clue, but that's about it. I feel like most people, are, those are the, really the three people that really investigate, right? They thoroughly investigate everything. Makoto, Kyoko, and Byakuya, those are definitely the three. The rest don't really actually give a shit. I mean, Sakura kind of has an excuse because she's always, you know, looking at the body, but yeah. I'm fine with solving everything on my own with kind of with Byakuya's help and Kyoko, but problem is, can we count on Kyoko for this case? I don't know, but I'm kind of like really looking forward to the class trial now. What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There must be a fake hero running around. What He's really saying? quick to sort of throw out that thing, you know? Fake hero. I mean, that could be possible, but still. What do you mean, fake hero? How would that even work? Unless he has a twin he doesn't know of? But that would be even weirder and even less plausible. You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else could possibly be the costumed attacker? What the heck? Uh, how do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on for yourself before you convict me! Okay! Fine! If you're gonna be a jerk about it, I will! Without missing a bit, Hina started putting on the Robo Justice costume. <laughs> See? Look! See how loose it is? Oh my god! <laughs> Hina actually looks like she's about to like... Like she's sinking in uh, in quicksand or something. Like, help me, please. I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Hmm? Uh... I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Caught up in what moment? Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. That's true. In a huff, Hina took the suit back off again. Uh, well, now you're all out of excuses. Uh, um... No no, see, it's because you're a girl. If it was another guy, then... <laughs> Makoto, go ahead. Okay. Against my will, I picked up the pieces off the floor and tried putting them on. It's no good. The arms are too long. 
There's no way I can wear this. Just a second. See? I told you it was impossible, and I was kind of sexist, Hero. <laughs> you are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hero's body. Exactly. But... Th th then... There's another costume! They must have one that looks the same, but... but fits them! Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? <laughs> You claim there is another suit, yes? You must find it and show it to us. <gasps> Wh what the heck? Just the worst. Who cares? Hero's the only one without an alibi doing this whole thing anyway. That's terrible. Which is how we know it was him. Wh wh what? Uh, I mean, is that really true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone, like, tell me? Robo Justice costume. I mean, it was weird. It seems like really impractical. It seems I mean, the fact that it couldn't bend at the waist means that he can't pick up stuff low from the ground, unless he bends through his knees. But even that, I, I really want to check it again, actually. But even like, I didn't think it was able to bend at the knees, right? I think it was. Wait, what was the note? Do we? Can we check it in here? Truth mm -hmm. bullets. There was a note on the blueprint, right? Have arms bent like this. Oh, it's arms, okay. Not waist or knees or anything like that. Alright. That doesn't really help us in, fortunately. Alright, hero. I guess we gotta <laughs> fill him in. Um, if you don't tell me what's going on, how am I supposed to understand? I think I figured out that someone's been killed, right? Hey, Makoto. Who was it? Well, two people were killed. Taka and Hifumi. What? what? Two people? Just the worst. Why are you freaking out? You did it. Please. I did not. Huh? Wait. Hold on. If those two are the ones that were killed. How about that? That's it. I know who did it. So then. You may as well tell us then. Hmm. Taka and Ifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? I'm at least 30% right! Which means right. Alter Ego and or Chihiro must have done it! Oh, wow. I don't know. It's an interesting thought. But how would Alter Ego exactly do that, right? I can understand the point that he's trying to, to, trying to make here, right? Which is the fact that, yeah, Hifumi and Taka were both... I mean, there's, there's just a connection there, right? Hifumi and Taka were both sort of head over heels, or they had their different reasons for being attached to Alter Ego. And it's kind of strange indeed that they both end up dying. So it's not, it's not that weird to then think, like, there must be some particular link between both Taka, Hifumi dying, and the fact that Alter Ego is missing in some sense. And it could be that Alter Ego tried to take a life on its own after knowing that Shihiro was dead. Because I think I mentioned that a couple of times. Where like the reaction of Alter Ego was really weird when he heard that Shihiro was, de was dead. It was like she almost was relief or actually happy. It could just mean like, yeah, okay, my master's no longer here. I can do what I want. I can apparently kill two people as well. I don't know how she, do Alter Ego would do that though from being an AI inside a computer. But I can sort of understand what he's trying to get at. Even though it's really far-fetched, he has a little bit of a point here, Hero. Correct. I see. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Please! Huh? Uh, unfortunate? What the heck? Stop trying to trick us. Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um... Uh, I'm telling you, you got it all wrong! Oh, so though! Uh, I know! That note! Note? Uh, um... Last night, someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole. Maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. <sighs> but the last thing I remember is going to the rec room and then for some reason, I fell asleep. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me or something. Just the worst. Not a chance. So... 
I feel like Hina is like really quick to point fingers, but with just the situation that we are in, right? You just can't be so quick to immediately say like, yeah, that's the person. And then the moment the class trial begins, like, yeah, it's here, okay, case closed. Because if we're wrong, we all die. So we need to put a lot of proper thought into it, explore every single freaking option, even if it's 99% sure that it might be hero, we still need to explore and look into that 1% where it can't be hero, because we don't want to end up dying ourselves, right? No. Hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have chemicals that could do that. Really? I told you! Someone's trying to set me up! A secret passage! A chance to escape! Someone wrote all that to trick me, but why the fuck would you even fall for that? <sighs> even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite at every piece of bait that floats in front of you! <sighs> well, after being trapped here for so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? <laughs> Oh, they preyed on my desires to get out of here! They deceived me! Oh. I still don't buy it! Don't be mean! Well, you should buy it! Just a second! Okay, then show us that note! Hmm. With pleasure. I have it right here in my, um, pocket. <sighs> Anyone want to bet right now that it's gone? No way! It looks like I lost it. I fucking knew it. <sighs> yeah, sure. Please. You gotta believe me! I wouldn't hurt a fly! <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the notes? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want us to believe you, give us a reason. Uh -huh. Wha what the heck? For serious? Alright, yes, so here is a count. <laughs> now then, shall we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it. What the heck? Why? Why did you kill them? Tell us, hero. Uh -huh. No! It's like I said. Just the worst. Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. You must be totally broke. And that's why. Please. Wait, that's a false accusation. Someone help me. What are you saying? Just be thankful we haven't bound and gagged you. <laughs> if you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for evidence, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, you're right. I need to look for the second suit. And that note. Feet don't fail me now! I guess I'd better get back to guard duty. I was gonna go ask Toko, uh, Genocide Jack, to switch with me. Mm. But if she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye. One by one, everyone peeled Makoto. away. Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? I want you to help me with the investigation. It would seem... It looks like I got a late start on this one, so I need to make up some ground. Hmm... Sure... I don't mind helping, but can you promise me something... later? When we have the time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why is that? No... To reject me so simply... Anyway... Oh my god, wow, she is so blunt. She's like, nope, not gonna tell you. Anyway, I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Uh, okay. Shall we go? Thanks. Now then, shall we? Hey. <sighs> I'm really curious, like, not only is she, like, she's not even, like, uh, not embarrassed, but, like, you know, some people would get nervous about the fact that suspicion might be put on them because of the fact that they were missing, but Kyoko is not even even worried at all. She's like, yeah, no, okay, I had something to do. Nobody can know about what the fuck it was. It's none of your fucking business. That's just the way it is. And yeah, she's not even worried about it, so that makes me a little bit worried, to be honest, but I don't know, like, there are so many more reasons to trust Kyoko than not, 
But to be honest, all we need is one right reason not to trust someone for them to stab us in the back. So yeah, I don't know. Like I really, truly, desperately want to believe and trust in Kyoko, but I don't know. She has to tell us. I feel. I just, I'm just really curious. But yeah, we'll find out in the next video. Maybe, probably not. But at least we'll. So yeah, she'd like to examine the corpses first. Examine the corpses. I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than the living. Hey. Wouldn't you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Just say yes? Anyway. We have to hurry. Before the class trial begins again. Y yeah, you're right. Okay then. Show me where the bodies are. They're in... The repository. Then I guess we should head that way for now. The repository. Wait, this is the second floor. Gotta go up to the third. Almost wanted to say in before the bodies are already gone, but I'm pretty sure Sakura and Hina are supposed to be watching the bodies, right? Yep, exactly. Hifumi. And Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed rigid. For but only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka, and without hesitation, began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth. She was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. Uh, like this is obviously right. Could the Justice Hammers have been designed using these as a model? Definitely. Either way, all the hammers here have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered. All right, I remember. Oops. For some reason, one hammer was wet. Did someone wash it recently? Uh, I see. Makoto, I found something. You did? Hey. Do you remember the weird wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did? <sighs> Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? No, that's not it. Anyway, you said he had a watch. Like, oh my god, like, uh, just the fact that you don't notice a person's watch doesn't mean you dislike them. Like, some people actually just pay really close attention to details like that, and others just don't at all. That doesn't really mean that they dis or dislike or like a person, you know? So then, take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It most likely broke when he had this encounter with his assailant. If you notice, the hands are frozen at just past 6 o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after 6. That's right. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey, you! How long were you gonna keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he stared pointedly at his wristwatch. It's almost 10 o'clock, you know that? Bedtime for all the little boys and girls. In other words... So if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. Meaning he broke the nighttime rule, which is only like... Which isn't a Monokuma rule, but you know, a, a rule set by us in place. So it, it has no particular punishment, but still, most of us aren't really around at 6 in the morning. Uh, broken wristwatch. However... And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. He appears to be gripping something, but how? I guess the muscles tense up right after death because rigor mortis sits in. I guess that that's how it, why his like hand is still like so in a fist. You're right. There's something white in there. Don't tell me it's the similar note. Makoto. Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor, right? Uh, I guess. Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Haka's cold hand. The ice cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, 
I was finally able to free the object with his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? Hey. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? Is that right? I wonder about that. Of course it is. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. So then? Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. Uh, Ki uh, Kiyotaka's scrap of paper. Alright girl, do your magic. So, did you find Indeed. anything? I did. More than I expected to be honest. Look at this. A lot of paper? Ah, oh, is that part of the piece that was torn off from Taka as part of this paper? That's right. Fumi had it hidden on him. Hidden? Indeed. He'd stuffed it in his pants. So I can only assume he'd hidden it on purpose, you see. In his pants? Wait! So you Why is that? It was just his pants. Not like his socks or something. I don't know what that means. Hey. <laughs> She's not that fussy about that stuff. Like, yeah, it's just his pants, right? It's just where his pee pee is, that's all. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important to Fumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note? I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. And look, there's a piece to- oh my freaking god. This is the letter that Hiro was talking about earlier that he saw. And Fumi has it on him for some reason. But there's a piece of it torn off. Which apparently is the piece that Taka has. So... That sounds very familiar. That's it! It's the same thing Hiro said. Then he was telling us the truth. However... Although... It's not exactly the same. Is it? Uh, um... Last night... Someone slipped a weird note under my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet up in the rec room at 1 a.m. And that note says something 6 a.m., right? The time is different. Hiro told us that his note said to meet at 1 a.m. See? I don't know who the fuck it is, yeah, but everybody, one person said this all in place. Like, he planned out this entire, like, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna set this note to Hiro. He's gonna meet me at 1. I'm gonna kidnap him, stuff him in the locker. Then I'm gonna pretend to be Hiro, kill Hifumi after I sent him the note to meet me here at 6 a.m., kill him, and then blah 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 blah. And then basically, he just set up this entire scenario, right? He just planned out everything, you sick motherfucker. Oh my god. But the note they wrote to Hifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Hifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him. Huh? So. Part of it had been torn off, right? I think there's likely some meaning there. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped? Um... Could you maybe explain it a little more? Think carefully. Hey! Why would he even have been clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I... have no idea. So then... What if it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would something important like that become a mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. Why do I need to answer that? I didn't note Hifumi had. Hey. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there were, was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't have to think about the handbooks this time? Is that right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. You could be a spy sending me on the wrong, you know, in the wrong direction by saying, yeah, the handbooks have nothing to do with it. 
All I said was that they weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may come a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. Okay, the, the thing is, I don't think Kyoko is the spy, okay? Like, yeah, it's very plausible and she's been really suspicious in the sense that, yeah, she could be the spy. Mainly because she doesn't tell a lot about herself, we don't know a lot about her, therefore making her, like, you know, one of the top candidates. But... I, I just have a feeling that the, per, the, the whoever the fuck this spy is for uh, Monokuma is the person that did this. It just makes more sense, I feel. Don't ask me why, because I can't come up with a reason right now, but it that's just the gut feeling I have. A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. But if Kyoko think it, it's important, I'd better keep it in mind. Alright, well, that's gonna be important at some point. Oh no, it's gonna start. Are you excited? Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin! Not particularly like excited. Like the bright burst of fireworks. Like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado... Everyone, please meet at the usual spot. Oh, that fucking... Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. It would seem... It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You have to figure out the rest for yourself and come to the proper conclusion. Yeah... You're right. Like, uh, this is the one thing that I, I find, like, kind of... Not annoying, but it's just like, uh, in this story, it doesn't make quite sense. That, like, the burden of, of proofing everything, you know, of coming to the conclusion of who ultimately killed it, it always lies on Makoto for some reason. I don't understand, because there's the same amount of pressure on everyone else, right? It's not like Makoto only gets punished if... Uh, if the if we get the answer wrong of not finding the right killer, if not finding the blackened, but for some reason it's always like, yeah, okay, Makoto, you gotta figure that out. Yeah, you gotta figure that out. Or you go look for that Makoto. Like I understand we're the we're the player, you know, we're controlling Makoto, and obviously we gotta be the person carrying out most of the things. But still, the fact that people keep telling us like, yeah, Makoto, you gotta do it. I'm not gonna do shit. Shall we go? It's just a little bit. I don't know. I feel like people need to pull their own weight, you know. It's like I'm carrying everyone here. Well, we better get going. It's not even okay. I'm. I, it's more like I'm carrying most of the people, and then the people who are capable of doing it, which are which is Kyoko and Byakuya. It just feels like they're playing games. Like they know the answer, but they're just like waiting, like trying to see if I can figure it out for myself. Which is kind of the frustrating part as well, right? Because they're like, it's like they're toying with me almost. Okay. Well, there is the dreaded red door which I'm going to be entering in the next video. So yeah, as usual when it comes to class trials, I'll just be probably recording that in one go and then split it up in uh, appropriate parts. So, oh my god, I, I honestly don't know what to expect. I don't know because, you know, obviously gut feeling says the, the most easiest answer is definitely hero. Hero's just like, yeah, it seems to fit the most, it's probably Hero, but it's never that easy. It was, it's never that easy, it's never gonna be that easy. So, as much as the evidence that we have right now seems to point towards um, Hero, there are a lot of sort of, you know, loose clues as well, where I feel like once the dialogue starts during the class trial, we'll come to find out as to what probably has happened. And I'm pretty sure the end conclusion is gonna be that it wasn't Hero. So that's just the feeling that I have. I don't know exactly what else to think about and say about the class trial. I just really wanted to start and see what the fuck is gonna happen. So yeah, I wanna thank you guys so very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace.